Welcome to a new video. If you are new here, my name is Kim. I am a second grade teacher in West Michigan and usually on this channel I film vlogs. However, that is not what I have to share with you today. So I hope you don't mind something a little bit different. Today I thought it would be fun to sit down and just share 10 random tips and tricks, life hacks, I don't know, all of the things. Just random things that make my life a little bit better as a teacher. Things that I think help my classroom run a little bit smoother and just things that have made a difference. This is my fourth year of teaching. It is my third grade level. So I've taught fourth grade, then fifth grade, now second grade. It is my second building within my district. It's my fourth classroom. So I've kind of been all over the place and I have learned a lot on the way. I still have a lot left to learn. So if you have any tips or tricks or just random things that you want to share, little tidbits of advice, please leave those in a comment below and I might try to pin some different ones. I think I can only pin one at a time, but maybe I'll pin some really good tips that are in a comment below. So leave them all down there. I would love to know. Let's help each other out, make each other's lives easier. Let's do this. Okay, so my first piece of advice is to greet students at the door every single day. I really feel like this makes a huge difference in just helping to build those relationships and helping to start the day off right. My second tip also goes with relationship building. So I try to write my students lots of notes. And one thing that you could do is use the Sharpie oil markers to actually write directly on the student's desks. And you can leave little notes for them saying how much you love them and how awesome they are and just all of the fun things. I think this is a great way to build relationships as well. And it's just super fun. Little disclaimer here though, definitely test out the markers on like a little piece of one desk to make sure that it will come up first before you do it on all of the desks because I would hate for one of you to get in trouble because of my recommendation. So usually it will come off though just using a little bit of Expo marker over it and then either a paper towel or a wet wipe or whatever you have. <laughs> my next piece of advice is to always have your phone on you. Now this is like a safety precaution type thing as well in case you like go out for an extra recess or you're like walking around the building and you have an emergency then you at least have your cell phone on you. But the other reason why I really I like to have it with me is because I like to play paparazzi with my students. I take pictures of anything and everything that they are doing and I love printing them out. The students love seeing their pictures throughout the classroom. I have a couple different specific spots in my classroom where I print out pictures and then I post them. The kids love looking at them. They love talking about their memories from the beginning of the school year or like a specific project that we did. They love pointing it out and then it's fun during conferences too because the parents come in and they love, love, love seeing the pictures of their kids all around the classroom and then also I can use them within my newsletters that I send out to parents. So it's a win-win, take pictures of everything. This next piece of advice sounds very simple but it has made a big difference and it's not something that I've always done. So I have manipulatives at student height level available in the classroom at any time that they want to use them. So these are just like little bingo chips, I have like little counters, dice, all of those fun things and I have them on a bookshelf that's in my classroom that I allow my students to access at any time that they feel like they would be useful. Now we talk about how they're manipulative so they're to further our learning and not just to play with so you definitely have to front load that a little bit but I love it. My students are super independent. They walk over, take what they need, bring it back to their desk and it's so neat to see them using them during math lessons without me having to tell them to do so. So I love that. Okay this next one is probably self-explanatory as well but I did not do it as much my first year teaching and I've definitely learned to do it more as I've taught longer but it's just looking for opportunities to add movement into every single one of your lessons to help the kids stay engaged to give them opportunities to move and wiggle and walk and just do whatever you can so some things that we do in my class is we take our elbows and we'll spell out like our spelling words for example or even like yes or no we turn and talk with neighbors but a lot of times I'll say instead of talking to the neighbor beside you go ahead and stand on up find somebody who's not your neighbor who's not sitting right beside you and go talk to them um, we do where we will like actually stand up and walk around the room and then when I say stop you have to find somebody who's near you and that's the person you turn and talk with so you can make it academic or you can just make it fun like go noodle a great place to be my students also have loved freeze dance this year oh my gosh they're obsessed with it on YouTube there's so many different freeze dances that you can share with your students for like a little brain break but yes yeah, so we love it we love movement and it makes such a big difference in their ability to stay focused on what we're working on because I'm giving them opportunities to move and groove and get different parts of their brain working and their body working and I just think it's so important 
Another thing that I've gotten better at as I've taught for longer is displaying student work and being really mindful with which work I'm displaying. So my first year of teaching, I started the year with a spot for every single student to display their work. And it was a ton of work for me to constantly be switching it out. And then some students, if they didn't turn something in, then theirs would be like blank or they'd have like an old piece of paper up there for like ever it felt like. And so now I have a smaller space to display student work, but I'm more purposeful with what work I display, if that makes sense. So I try to choose just exemplary student work, students that have really worked hard on what they're working on, are really proud of what they're working on, and I ask the kids too. So I involve them more in the process. I say, hey, if you'd like anything displayed on, we have like a little fridge that I have over here. I'm like, if you want it displayed on the fridge, let me know, we'll look at it together, say, hey, does this look like something we should display on there, yes or no? And then we display it up there, and then they're super proud, and they can actually show the class like, yes, this is mine, I worked really hard on this, this is what I did. Another thing that I love doing in my classroom and I've done this since my first year of teaching is connection circles. I think that these are so powerful and if you are not doing them in your classroom already you absolutely need to. Like this would be my one thing that I'm like okay you need to take this and you need to try it like tomorrow if you can. So I love doing connection circles with my students. Basically we all just form a circle on our rug and then we have a talking piece. So lately our talking piece has been this little gourd. We pass it around and I model like only the person who's holding the talking piece is sharing at that moment. We can have students like pass but we always come back to them if it's just like a simple low risk question so I might say what are you doing this weekend or what do you hope to do this weekend um, and then every student gets a chance to share if students are having a really hard time with a specific question then I always give them alternative questions they could answer as well but I want to hear from every single student so I model that it's really important to listen closely and then to show like that you are paying attention to that person by being respectful not having your voice on and we try to make sure we're not like playing around with anything on the rug or talking to a neighbor or making funny faces or anything like that. We're super focused on the one person who's sharing and we're giving them our attention in that moment. So we do it a lot, especially at the beginning of the year, I do it basically every day. Now I do it maybe twice a week-ish, sometimes more if I feel like I need to, but I love those connection circles. My students love them as well. We learn so much about each other from those connection circles and they don't have to take very long. They can take like 10 or 15 minutes if you have just like a little odd time during the day, like right after snack or like right after breakfast or something like that where you just have like a little bit of time before you need to move on to something else I just feel like they're such a valuable time with my students and then we also do restorative circles so if something not so great happens like for an example last week two weeks ago I don't know fairly recently there was a lot of drama at gym all the drama everybody came back and you could just like feel it in the air like we were mad we were up in arms and so I said oh I think we need to have a restorative circle what do you guys think and they're like yeah I think we need to have a restorative circle so we all sat down I had a few kids who shared out how they were feeling we don't use names so it's not like a blame game but we share out how we're feeling and then we tried to come up with ways for how we can solve the problem or what we could do that would make us feel better and we always talk about how we're a class family and we say hey do you get mad at your family at home sometimes and they're like yeah I do get mad at my siblings or my mom or my dad or whatever, my grandma or grandpa, I do get kind of annoyed with them sometimes. And we're like, well, it's like a class family. Sometimes you're not going to be happy with each other and that's okay. So we just talk about ways to rebuild that relationship. And then if it was something where one specific child wants to apologize to the group, then sometimes I'll say, hey, do you want to do a restorative circle? And they'll say yes or no. And they might share out, hey, I'm really sorry that I behaved in this way. Um, next time, this is what I will do instead. And then we'll have a couple of kids maybe share out if they feel comfortable, how it affected them, how that behavior affected them or maybe just thank them thank you so much for that apology I accept that apology or maybe that apology is hard for me to accept right now but I'm going to keep working on it and maybe when you keep showing that you're willing to change and not do that in the future then th then it will be easier for me to accept that apology so my kids can just be like so mature with it they do so well and it just gives us a space to share our feelings but then also share some ways that we can make the situation better so honestly usually the kids are the ones coming up with like the natural consequences and we model like what that looks like and whatever but by this point in the year like they it is seamless like they could literally run it themselves they're awesome so yes all of that to say if you are not doing restorative circles and connection circles you need to do it like you absolutely I really truly believe in it I think it's amazing 
I think that it can really change the narrative and the vibe in the classroom. And yeah, I just highly recommend it. So restorative circles. <laughs> Another game changer is using whole brain teaching, specifically using mirrors. I know I've seen some things on Instagram where some people don't love whole brain teaching and don't love mirrors, so definitely take this with a grain of salt. It's just something that's been really working well in my classroom. So I say mirrors on, they say mirrors on. We do it for our affirmation of the day every day, so we say an affirmation, and there's usually like hand motions that go with it. But I also use mirrors for like anything and everything. So I use it when I'm teaching new concepts, and then I say teach, and they say okay, and they'll have to turn and tell a neighbor what we just talked about. I feel like it really helps me not to just be like talking at my kids, like it helps to get them involved in their learning, and it gives them an opportunity to turn and talk and talk about what they just learned, and then we'll come back to it later, and I just feel like they remember it so much better than if I'm just like saying it to them and expecting them to just like absorb it like little sponges. So having whole brain teaching be a part of my teaching has definitely changed the game. I've always done it a little bit, but I've done it way more this year, and I love it. My kids are so engaged, and and they just really enjoy it. I've talked about this in previous vlogs, I know, but I totally love Magic Scrap. It is not an idea of my own. I saw it when I was doing some placement once upon a time, and I love it. So basically, at the end of every day, I have my cleaning crew, which is actually a classroom job that I have. I have my cleaning crew. Um, there's two students on the cleaning crew, so they each choose something that's out of place around the room. So it might be a scrap of paper, or it might be like a chair that needs to be pushed in. It could literally be anything. But they choose it, they tell each other what it is, so that way, they they don't like accidentally choose the same thing. And then we say magic scrap begins. The rest of the students in the class go out and they start cleaning up the whole room. So my two cleaning crew students are watching to see who picks up their magic scrap or who like takes care of whatever the item was. And then I am always the one who tells the students when it ends. So I'll like go and ask my cleaning crew like, has your magic scrap been found? And they're like, yeah. Or they're like, no. And then they give me a hint or tell me what it is and I give a hint or whatever it might be. So then I wait till the room Room is completely clean and then I say all right head back to your seats our cleaning crews gonna announce who found the magic scrap and then we do these little like leadership tickets they're called like as a school-wide reward so I give out leadership tickets for those the kids love it it's so fun and every day like my students just love to do extra magic scraps here and there too so like if we ever do any cutting earlier in the day I always say Ooh, we're gonna do an extra magic scrap so that way that our floor isn't just like super messy all day magic scrap is seriously like one of my favorite things I do in my classroom I sometimes will get compliments from our custodial staff saying that my room is really well picked up so my kids do a great job with it they enjoy it I enjoy it and it's just a fun time so if you haven't tried that before I highly recommend it and then this last piece of advice is kind of a silly one, but if you are teaching in a mask all day, I really do think it is life-changing. I use a voice amplifier, a little microphone. I'll pop it up right here. I got this from Amazon last year when I started teaching in a mask because I did have a student who was hard of hearing and teaching in a mask like was just very, very challenging for me at the beginning of the school year last year. And I will never go back. I love this thing. It isn't super expensive and I was really lucky because my building did pay for it. I had requested it, my principal approved it, and so I was able to get it through school funds, which is super nice. But even if you can't, maybe you could put it on like an Amazon wish list or something like that. So yes, I highly recommend this. It works super well and it's nice because I can take it outside too as long as it's not like raining or anything like that and it will still work. I just clip it right to me. I have the wired one, but there is a wireless version as well. I just have not used it, but I highly recommend. I stinking love this thing. So those are 10 random pieces of advice that hopefully you can take and maybe implement in your room if you feel like they're a good fit for you. Let me know in a comment below some of your favorite tips, tricks, things that make your life easier, things that you could never go back and live without now. Let me know in a comment below and I would love for us to be able to share some of those ideas with each other. People can search through the comments, learn some new things. It'll be super fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more of these, definitely let me know. Also, if you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and take a moment to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.